So yeah, we're back again drinking some Nacho Father's Root Beer. <clears throat> How do you like it, Brian? Uh, I'm, I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pissed about the fucking 10% not being sold there. Yeah, that sucks. But we're sticking with aliases for this shit. Cello, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Ooh, fuck. So, yeah, no, let me tell you about my fucked up morning. Okay. So, I wake up, and I bake, and get dressed, and I'm ready to go, and as soon as I'm leaving out the door at 9 o'clock, the fucking power company shows up. Like, two tall-ass white dudes in hard hats and belts and vests were like, yeah, we're here to shut your power off. And they were like, it looks like someone's been tapping into your box and bag because it's busted open. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? There's wait. Hello, there's no reason our power should be shut off because my mom went through emergency assistance and I just threw her $500. Even though I'm not working, I threw her $500 for bills and shit. Alright. Because I hustle like that. Just for these motherfuckers to show up and be like, yeah, we, like, we need to cut your power off because your box is open. <coughs> and it's like, uh, uh, but this shit should be paid for. Doesn't matter. It's a safety <coughs> issue. Okay, so when can you turn it back on? Whenever we get an electrician to fix the box. So now she's got to pay like 200 some dollars to get the box fixed. A whole new box. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Which is some Kentucky Fried bullshit. It really is. So yeah, my power is shut off in my house because someone decided to steal electricity and we've been wondering like, oh, why is our electric bill like $1,200 and shit? So oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't use that much electricity. You it's really like, don't. It's like, we're not a grow house, even though I want us to be. <laughs> Go somewhere where that shit's legal, that you can write it off on your taxes. It's less expense. Yeah. I don't know. At some point, I fucking want to get solar panels on that house. Like, I love that house, but I hate that house at the same fucking time. Like, it's small, and it's old, and it's creepy at times. Ooh, oh, so creepy. It's like, doors blow open sometimes out of nowhere. Not even on windy days. Are you sure it's not, are you sure it's not, it's not just a ghost, a ghost trying to walk through it? I feel like it might be ghosts sometimes. Well... Let me put it this way. Are you afraid of those fuckers when they were alive? <laughs> nah, not really. Then why the fuck are you afraid of them now that they're not? I'm not afraid of ghosts. It's just irritating. Especially when you're like, you know, chilling in the dining room high as fuck. And that d door to the front porch just blows open and you know you locked it. Right. Well, you know, ghosts gotta get from room to room, I guess. <laughs> Alternatively... The Illuminati are sending one of their special agents in to, to watch you get high. You know... You're constantly being watched by people, wear, by people wearing, spe wearing special thermal cloaks get, who are watching you every time you, every time you smoke up. Now you saw some of the ignorant-ass niggas I hang out with <laughs> that believe in the black Illuminati and shit. It's like, Kanye West... It's pulling strings of, like, black music. I'm like, really? Nah, 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 nah. All I, all I can say about Kanye West is that I completely agree with, pre with President Obama's se sentiments on him. He's an asshole? A jackass. He's a jackass. I mean, don't get me wrong. <coughs> Kanye West, in my opinion, has <coughs> four... He has four of the greatest hip-hop albums of all times. That does not excuse you to be a jackass. It really doesn't. But, on top of being jackass, he's actually kind of crazy. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, he's, well, here's the thing. Well, genius isn't a little crazy. Well, not just genius, not just that. I mean, I don't even necessarily know I'd call him a genius as such. I wouldn't say he isn't. I'm just saying that, you know. <clears throat> I'm just saying that I wouldn't necessarily say he is either. Don't know the guy. But he a little batshit crazy. Well, and more to the point, he spent the last what? What has it been? 
at least six or seven years since since he first since he first started making waves, and lots of money for whoever owns for for whoever owns his record label. Jay Z. Right. Mr. Sean Carter. Right. So here's the thing. Nobody around him is going to tell him no unless he's going to, unless he's doing something potentially catastrophic, and even then, only maybe. Yeah, that's the problem with having too many yes motherfuckers around you. Well, the thing is that once you start making a ton of money, they're, that's exactly who's going to surround you because they don't want you to say, you know what, fuck this, I'm going to go work for the, for the assholes across the street. You know? Jay-Z's he's not stupid. He knows, that he, know, he knows that Kanye West can walk anytime he wants and every other record label on the planet will be lining up to sign him up. I don't know. After Jay, what Jay-Z said in that interview about Kanye, like, I love Kanye West. He's one of the greatest producers I've ever worked with, but he's difficult. And nobody wants to work with difficult when you got, like, seven other motherfuckers that can do exactly like what Kanye does in the studio, but not be difficult. <coughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing. I here's think, the thing. For all the, for all that I'm not his biggest fan, <clears throat> here's the thing. I see a music. I see a music. I see a. I see a. I see a. I see a music product put up by Kanye West. I at least know what I'm getting. You know. Oh look, Kanye put out another another album. I have an idea of what of what level of quality I can expect from that. These other people, I don't know who the fuck they are. Now it's true that Jay Z may may know that they're that they're as good or better than Kanye is, but I don't know that. Like just Blaze just released some fire. I mean, I don't know. All our great producers are doing so much shit. Like just Blaze. Who am I trying to think? This isn't shit. Like just Blaze. But yeah, no. There's lots of dope ass hip hop producers that lots of people who fuck with hip hop. No, better than you do. Sure. But again, but I say me, I don't necessarily mean me personally, because honestly, I can take hip-hop or leave it. Yeah, there, yeah I'm not saying there's no good hip-hop songs out there. But I'm as saying, a whole, as a genre, it's as not a genre, what you it's listen not to. my cup of tea, no. Which, I can respect that. Like, well, and the fact that so much of it isn't made for somebody like me. I am not who they're making this music for, and I can accept that. I can accept that it doesn't make it bad. It just means I'm not who it's I'm not who it's supposed to be talking to. You're not the target demographic. I'm not the person who's suppo- who it's supposed to resonate with, and that's cool. That's fine. If everything had to be made to cater to me, I'd be a little creeped out, honestly. <clears throat> like, who the hell is deciding this, and when did they decide that I was the tastemaker for the rest of the fucking planet? <laughs> Everybody else would probably want my would probably want my ass dead because you know I listen to shit like Van Canto, acapella metal. You know. Oh, you have my lighter, don't you? Yeah, I do. There you go. Whoop! Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn fingers, do what I say. <clears throat> you know, I listen to shit like Power Wolf, which is some of the cheesiest ass power metal you are gonna find. I mean, I can't, like, I listen to everything, like, and I'm on my way over here on Viking, I was listening to Slayer, like, oh my god, I love biking downhill to Slayer. (laughs) (coughs) You know, or I listen to, uh, I listen to Falconer, slightly more melodic power metal. I'm trying to think what metal have I been listening to, like. Well, you, you ain't gotta listen to you ain't gotta listen you ain't gotta listen to metal, dude. It's. I mean, I love metal, but I'm trying right. to think as far as metal I've been listening to recently. Dragon Force and Corn is about it for recent months. Oh fuck you, Corn is not metal. Corn is Corn is emo with an electric guitar. Freak on a leash is so metal. Ugh. Freak on a leash is like, just like the most metal, angry teen white boy album of the '90s. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you that it one. It's so full of suburb, suburban teen <coughs> angst, like... Yeah, which is what makes it emo. Which is what makes it one of the greatest, like, metalcore albums of my life. Ugh. Well, all I can, well, all I can say to that is fuck you, Corn is not metal. And Dragon Force... <laughs> okay, Dragon Force is metal, but oh my god. You don't want to go through the fire? 
Yeah, that's the one song everybody knows from them. To be fair, they do have a bad habit of, ma of just of, of, of just releasing one song per album and then remixing it like four or five times, barely. <clears throat> and I did find so, my job for a cowboy CD the other day. Like, I, like, I, I, at some point, if you, at some point, they're going to put out a best of Dragon Force CD, raw, CD or DVD. It's going to be. Like it's, well, it's going to be the, through the fire. No, it's going to be one song for me. It's going to be the best iteration. What they think the best iteration of the of each of the song of each album is. <clears throat> but you're not going to have two songs from the same album because they'll sound the fucking same. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Mm, I'm not going to say you're right. <laughs> but I'm not wrong. Yeah, no, today was, today was quite a bullshit day. I went to the job fair because my sister was like, yeah, you should, you need to go to this job fair. Wasn't shit there for me, really, other than, like, the whys. Well, that sucks. Meanwhile, after being told roundly that he's an asshole by someone who, well, let me put it this way. If you picture young, angry black woman, you're picturing her. I think I might actually be the only white person she gets along with. You talking about that chick, Shamika? No, 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 no. <coughs> Shamika just likes people, just likes being pretty, and likes being around people who who like to be pretty. Since I have, since I have never been pretty, and have never been all that terribly interested in being pretty. Uh, she fall out at my Gucci swag. <clears throat> well, see, but you can pull off the pretty look. I can't. When I try, I, when I try, I just looks like I just looks like I just looks I just looks somebody like somebody tried to gussy up a bulldog, and not a handsome bulldog at that. It's funny that you use the word pretty, because I've been called pretty like four times in the past like week. No fucking lie. <laughs> this chick messaged me on OK Cupid. And she was like, you're pretty. But like, the first line. I was just like, thank you. Like, I've never been called pretty. But it's like, yeah, I kind of do got some pretty boy swag. Not saying you don't. That's, in fact, exactly what I just said. Exactly. No, I'm really liking the pretty boy swag shit. Like, but me? Nah. I could be handsome. In fact, I am handsome. But pretty? I am not pretty. I'm sure you clean up nice. I do, but again, handsome. Yeah. You know, I look like I, I look like I should be riding a white charger, wearing a gleaming breast wearing a green, gleaming breastplate and a sword, yelling, shouting, for, shouting for the people to rally to me. You do like the type of guy that drives a Firebird or a Camaro. You know, <laughs> I got that. I got that kind. Of, I got that kind. Of, I got that kind of look going on, which is fine. I'm 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 okay, I'm okay with this, but. You know, yeah. No. I mean, there's certain. I mean, I mean, the, you know, for someone for someone like Shamika, I might as, I might I might as, I might I might as well be I might as well be you know an amorphous blob. Well, just <laughs> well, just just you know, not someone she can readily understand. Yeah. Holy fuck! What time is it? Is it four twenty yet? Three minutes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It's like. Today's been a crazy day, but I'm just pissed. I don't have any power at home. Which reminds me, I need to get out my computer. Yeah, charge that shit up while you're here. Yeah. Yeah, the fuck. Uh, see, this is what I mean by your electric bill can't possibly be all that high. Because if it did, every time you came over here, <laughs> I'd expect a, a massive spike in, in, my, in my electrical bill. But the fact is, your presence or absence doesn't... At most, it adds a couple of bucks to uh, it. I mean, I've got, like... Over the course of a month. Well, like, I have a 42-inch TV in my room that I don't use because it uses way much more power than, like, my smaller TV that's, like, half the size of that one. Yeah. Like, 
I don't use it because it uses too much power and I don't <laughs> fucking game like that where I like I want a big TV. It's like actually I've come accustomed to when I do game, gaming on a smaller TV. But most I just like HDMI to my laptop and YouTube or Netflix <coughs> and porn. Which oh my god. So I watched the I've watched the Lego Batman movie like three times now. I watched it twice yesterday. Oh jeez. Okay, this is what happened. I woke up early, like, usual, normal person time, but I couldn't breathe them my allergies, so I took, like, four Benadryl, started watching the movie, passed out. Um, so, like, while the Lego, Lego movie has so much feels, this one had feels and Batman, and Will Arnett might be my new favorite Batman. Like, he might have just knocked Kevin Conrad down a little. I, that sounds blasphemous, I know, but... Will Arnett might play the most honest Batman we've ever had. How do you figure? Um, there's a lot of shit about family and loneliness and... Okay, okay, so he actually plays up the fact that, that Bruce Wayne is basically, the, is basically the Goonies, is basically the Goonies superhero. It's funny though, there's one scene where... You know, he, he lives in his parents' house in his parents' basement, staring at a computer screen all day, <laughs> and he goes out dressed as a giant bat... <clears throat> No, one of the funny Occasionally has sex with a woman dressed as a cat. So they introduced Michael Sarah as Robin. <laughs> okay, see, now, depending but, on the Robin, that could actually be either really good or really bad. That's just it. He's, he might be my third favorite Robin. He might be my third Who's favorite. second? Stephanie Brown. Okay, fair. Tim Drake is number one. All right, yeah, all right, all right. We're on the same page there, then. Tim Drake is the best Robin, clearly. Well, obviously... Because he's the only... Well, here's the thing, though. He's the only one that discovered Batman's identity. <laughs> well, and he's the only one that you could plausibly see taking over for Batman if when, when Bruce Wayne bites it. I mean, Dick was a cool Batman, but... Yeah, and don't get me wrong. He's the best Robin. Don't get me wrong. It felt right to have Dick have a swing at... I, I was just rereading the Nightfall um, story arc, and the whole th time it was just like, why the fuck didn't you assholes just get Dick from the beginning? Is that a John Paul Valley? Right. Crazy ass motherfucker. Fuck it. Okay, to be fair, <laughs> Azrael is a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun as Azrael, Azrael is a lot of fun. But John Paul Valley as Batman is kind of a shit show. Right, it really is. I don't like how the comics don't even try to pretend it wasn't. No, no, they make reference to that all the time in the New 52 books. And you're like, so this is canonical now? It's like, stop picking and choosing because... Well, but, but that's the whole point it. of the New 52 was that they can pick and choose... So they don't have to have shit like Batman going up against going up against, and this is a, and this was an actual published Batman story that was canonical up until whichever crisis it was that wiped all the previous canon out the first time. Sin Fang. I don't know. My who biggest... turned out to not actually be a Chinese dude, but a white dude, and a, but a white dude, but a white dude who pay, who, and this is also true, painted his face yellow. Comics were racist as fuck one time. Well, no shit. They're still a little racist. The, 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 the yellow, the, the yellow menace is the bad guy in like, in, in like, ha, in like half the, in like half the early detective detective comic stories. Like when in Batman's solo book, it's mostly it's mostly it's mostly people like. But when that kicks off, it's mostly people like the Joker, or the Penguin, or Hugo Strange. <clears throat> Who seriously has the shittiest backstory of any Batman villain? I was ugly, so then I became evil. I mean, he was evil always. Although I do like what Gotham has done with Hugo Strange's character in the show. They have made. <coughs> have they got Batman on that show yet? Uh, Gotham really needs a time skip. Gotham it, really needs Batman. It needs a. That's just it. I was I was I would I would kill for I would kill for a decent adaptation of Batman of Batman year of Batman year zero or Batman year one <coughs> year one preferably but you know I don't know what I wanted Gotham to be was more like Gotham Central mm. and it has some of those elements but it's mostly just Jim Gordon's like zero year to year five like it's which is cool and it's interesting because. I mean, they're so desperate to, like, get viewership. Because <coughs> the CW shows... <coughs> no, 
not only are there four shows on CW, but they cross over. And also, the crossovers never feel forced to me. Also, can I just comment on something really funny? Having read the early, having read the the Avengers through most of its incarnations up to now, yeah, or at least up to the last few years. Um, one thing that I find really funny is that so the Avengers was so the Avengers were very much a superhero soap opera. Like I'm reading this shit and I'm thinking, who wrote this? The CW writers. <coughs> <coughs> Speaking of CW, so I was talking about the uh, Flash and. Arrow and Legends and Supergirl. Uh-huh. <coughs> uh, I really want to check out the CW's Archie show. It's like Twin Peaks meets Archie. It sounds weird and interesting as fuck to me. Twin Peaks meets Archie. I'm, I'm down. <coughs> See, now that actually makes me vaguely interested. Ex- right? It's, it's like, like, okay... I mean, because, well, let's be honest, if they tried to do it straight, it would just be remaking Happy Days. Literally. You're completely right. You know, it'd be remaking Happy Days without without the Fonz. Because really, who in that gang is the Fonz? <coughs> no one. Exactly. <coughs> but the thing is, we don't need Happy Days minus the Fonz. We need Happy Days plus three Fonzes. Well, or we need, or, or, you know, we need some interesting twist on it. <clears throat> Twin Peaks. There we go. Weird shit's happening, weird shit's happening. Right. I mean, what my uh, sister told me is that it's pretty much like the first season of Buffy, where it's like weird phenomenon after weird phenomenon. Except, you know, hopefully good. Except for no vampires, which I'm like, but there might be vampires. Sure, but, you know... But I'm like, okay, there might be vampires. That's cool. Just don't make it Twilight vampires. That's all I ask. I mean, I have such mixed feelings about Twilight as a... as a fucking... entity. I know. My feelings are pretty uncomplicated. I mean, the movies kind of suck donkey balls, but... Well, the, books... the movies, movies suck donkey, suck donkey balls. The books suck donkey balls. Well, no, I like the book because the books, Bella's an avatar. Yes. She's meant for the reader to imprint their own personality in. Yes. So you get a sense of a personality reading it over, like, 300 fucking pages. Sure, like, but if it takes 300 pages for me, it takes 300 pages for me to get any hints of actual personality from the I main mean, character, from the central character. By the end of chapter two, I was like, I was hooked reading Twilight. <sighs> By the end of chapter two, I was like, oh my god. But that was after I seen the movie. And I was just like, I just gotta read this uh, to read this. This was before the movies even came out. See? A, fr- a friend loaned me the first three books, and I returned, and I ret- and I returned them to her with, uh, with the words, thank you, but never, ever again do I want to know about your sexual fantasies. There is so much sexual repression in that shit. Well, no shit. It was written by a Mormon housewife. You would know. You're a Mormon. Former. Right? Former Mormon. And it's and it's not that that was actually pretty widely publicized. Yeah, no, everyone knew she was a Mormon housewife. But trust me, the sexual. Repro- let me put it this way: I have not gotten so I have gotten nowhere n- nowhere near as much dick since since I since I stopped hanging out with the, hanging out with the Mormon guys <clears throat> than I did than I did than I did when I was with the Mormons. I mean, so much gayness, and of course it's officially frowned on by the church, which just makes it all the more fun when you do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever floats your boat. Oh my goodness. <coughs> I'm a little tipsy. No shit. I did drink that first beer pretty fast. You did. Not your father's root beer. The official beer of the Fun Awkward Podcast. <laughs> Oh, the heroes hope we were gonna give that spot to Honey Vice. But Honey Vice has enough endorsements, it doesn't need this too. I don't like Honey Vice myself. You don't? It's not as sweet. see I'm used to Honey Brown from Missouri, which is a lot sweeter. Okay, that's fair. It's a it's a it's darker and sweeter. No, that that makes sense. I mean honey vice <clears throat> is okay, but uh not your beer of choice. If I'm willing to pick a honey beer, it's not the one I want. No, that's fair. I just like it because it's a little less bitter than some than a lot of vices. 
but you know, <clears throat> this stuff is pretty good, if a little too sweet for my taste. I want to make a root beer float with this shit. Oh my god. Um, I think my favorite thing to make a root beer float with is a is Bailey's. Is the Bailey's Irish cream, vanilla ice cream, and root beer? Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. It's the best root beer float. It's the best float. Like, oh no, that sounds fantastic. Just don't serve it to children. Or you know, go ahead and serve it to children. It's not like they're my kids, so I don't give a shit. I mean, if they were my kids, I would not serve them those drinks until they're at least sixteen. Well, yes, obviously. No, don't serve it to little little children. But you know, actually, thinking about it, like I think uh, my friend, mom did friend, let me drink a, a beer when I was seventeen. A friend's dad gave me a beer when I was nine. My we're friend's out, dad out, did the out, same thing to me when we were out fish, We were out fishing. We were out fishing. <laughs> me, him, his dad, and yeah. his uncle. And uh, his uncle brought along like a twelve pack of Budweiser. What is it with white people giving like beer to kids on hunting and fishing trips? It's a rite of passage. Ex that's what they say. That's what they say. But I'm like, I'm ten years old. I just killed my first deer. I'm a little traumatized. Yes, yes. Congratulations. You've proven that you've proven that if it comes down <laughs> to it, you are capable of killing for the clan. I'm a little traumatized. And as, now a you're reward, hit me as a reward, as a reward, as a reward, as a reward, as a reward for proving that you are enough of a man to kill for the clan if you have to, you get to drink a you get to try a man's drink. <laughs> it was Bud, and you know what? I can't stand Bud today. No, I, I'm not. Well, here's the thing. My uh, my my new boss at work actually revealed to me the secret of Budweiser. You don't drink the glass bottle stuff. It's actually better in the cans. I've been hearing that recently about a lot of beers lately. As I like try to broaden my beer horizon and become less. Well, beer it, that is actually a thing though, is because you know most traditional recipes. It's like a lot of elves like idea glass. That, well, it's because well, because the whole canning thing. But drafts, you kind of want the can. Is That's what I'm learning. Pretty much it, yeah. Well, it boils down to modern versus traditional recipes. Modern recipes, many of them, are made with the idea that they're going to be put in cans. So that, uh, that you know how the can changes the taste, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so a lot of them are made with the idea that the taste will change after it's canned. I don't know. That's like. I've been trying to. I actually drink beer, so I need to go to the liquor store out in, um, <coughs> was it Richfield? Roseville. Rosedale? Whatever straight north of North Minneapolis. I want to say Rosedale. Yeah, Rosedale. Um, the liquor store out there next to the Dollar Tree, you can buy, like, individual bottles of beer for, like, less than $2 a bottle, and you can build your own six-pack. Nice. For these beers that are like anywhere from a dollar thirty nine to a dollar seventy nine. Me, I usually me what I usually do when I want to try something new. I'll just find a sampler from a company that I trust. Yeah, I I bought the um, Sam Adams sampler a few months ago. About a, yeah, it was about Don't two months ago. Sam Adams does some really good seasonals. Um, their seasonal samplers, they they I like their fall sampler. Like their fall sampler is. I like every, like, beer in there. Their spring sampler, I only liked, like, two of them, but <coughs> they were really dark. They were really dark Indian pale ales and shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, oddly enough, I don't really like Liney's summer lineup because it's mostly Berry Vice and Summer Shandy. And Berry Vice is just, oh. And the Summer Shandy is way too sweet. Way too sweet and sticky. <laughs> Thought you liked the sticky. Hi yes, yo. but I like it salty and sticky. Thank you. <laughs> uh, believe me, if believe, believe me, if that if that's if that comes out sweet, you should probably see a proctologist about that. Oh shit! Did it finish downloading on my internet at home? Or a urologist. <laughs> I don't know, it's like, I mean, because I regularly fast, I've come off a of fast and only eaten strawberries and pineapple, hoping that it'll make my cum taste sweet to the person, whoever's eating it, 
And I've never gotten any comments, like negative because, or positive. Well, because here's the thing, they actually <laughs> tested that, and it doesn't work. It's like, I mean, I've heard it makes her come sweeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard that, really too. I've really tried it. That. I've heard that, too, and I was a little nervous about it, because, you know, me and pineapple. Um, but, no, no, it, 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 I, at least, and I, the, according, to the, according to the studies, nothing. And according to my own experiences, nothing. Yeah, I mean, I've tried which is just, it. Which was just so damn disappointing. I've never gotten a comment. Strawberry flavored jizz. They'd have to pry me. They'd have to pry me off of whoever off of whoever's dick with a crowbar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have the horrible visual of like someone literally trying to pry you off of a dick with a crowbar. <laughs> like you're just like, let me suck the dick. <laughs> Give me the dick, give me the dick. <laughs> like, uh, uh, funny, 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 funny. Yep. Um, oh, Legion. Legion, the FX show based off of Charles Xavier's son. It it finished last week. Right? I I'm curious to watch it. I've, I've on the stayed. one hand, on the one hand, on the one hand, I agree that they could probably that. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're gonna do a show about mutants, you have to do it pre M day. Well, yeah. When like you know, there's a billion mutants and their and here's the funny thing with that. A lot of their powers overlapped to some degree. Yeah. But none of them were exact duplicates. Like Nightcrawler, like Nightcrawler can teleport and. That, I want to say Pixie or Magic or some shit like that. Magic and Pixie can both teleport. Right. So you're right. But none of the three of them have exactly the same power. Yeah. Pixie is like, she's a mix of Wasp and she can teleport. Right. <laughs> well, at one point, her tele each of their teleports have different limitations. Like, um, Nightcrawler's, like, I think, Night I think, I think that, uh, Magic was the one with the greatest range, but she had to know where she was going. Whereas Nightcrawler doesn't need to know where he's going, he just needs to know how far away it is. Approximately. I fucking hate magic post uh, X-Men versus Avengers. Like, X-Men versus Avengers? Okay, magic? Already one of the strongest on the X-Men team. Give her the Phoenix Force? Really? Yeah. Well, there, that's kind of a tradition. Because before, because the, remember the original possessor of the Phoenix Force, Jean Grey, could, could could and did frequently mop the floor with the all of the other X Men. No, no, no. So the whole thing of like X Men versus Avengers is Cyclops, Colossus, Emma Frost, and Magic. Lost, I was gonna say, and you lost me and Emma Frost. They all get Phoenix Force powers. So it's, like, so it's literally fear itself, but with the Phoenix Force. Kinda, kinda. Except for they make the world a utopia, but the Avengers is like, that's too much power. What are you guys gonna do with it? Okay, so, okay, like... okay, 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 okay. So it's literally, so it's so it's literally the, the one of the follow ups to the Infinity Gauntlet bit, with Adam Warlock's good side basically mass converting like ninety percent of the Marvel heroes to work for to work for her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, X Men versus Avengers is one of the most bullshittiest of all shittiest crossovers of the past fifteen years of Marvel Comics. Hands down, it is so retarded and dumb, but at the same time, it's a fun read. Oh sure. It's a fun fucking read, but the whole time you're just like, This is so fucking stupid. But you but you know but you know like, you know what they need to make a CW show based around? And I say CW specifically for their brand of superhero soap opera. They need they need to give they need to give the CW the original X Men lineup. I could see that because everyone was screwing everyone. Wait, wait, you're not talking about you're not talking about first class. You're talking about the first international team. I'm talking about Cyclops, Beast, Jean Grey, all Jean Grey, Iceman, Iceman. You know, throw some Colossus in there if you want to mix. If you want to mix it up. I mean, honestly, I 
I mean, that's hell, hell. Just do the Ultimate X. Just do it all based on riffing off of Ultimate X Men. See, Ultimate X Men is a redone of the first international team where you got Storm, Wolverine. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Every Cyclops. That's that international team. Which, that team was pretty like who everyone's fucking everyone, especially in the late eighties, early nineties when they introduced Gambit on the team. You had right? Gambit it's and the Fleetwood, Rogue. It's the Fleetwood Mac of superhero teams. It is the Fleetwood Mac of superhero teams. And it's about as functional. Yeah, no, and Chris Claremont is the rumors of like the X Men run because rumors is a whole album. People cheating on each other, talking about it on the fucking album. Being in love and hating each other. It's just... <coughs> right. Honestly, in the movies, I really hate that they went with the wolverine Jean Grey love connection. No, like I, the I, I, well, I like the wolverine connection. Well, I like, well I, that's why I say follow the ultimate ones, where there is a connection there, but it's pretty much... But it's but on Jean's end, it's pretty much physical, and on Wolverine's end, he's just the gooniest fucker about it. Um... What is it? What is it? You know, it? for a guy who's a contemporary for a guy who's a contemporary of Captain America, he is just awful at letting go. <laughs> He's a possessive dick in the Ultimate Universe. He really is. But it's hilarious. <laughs> the Ultimate Universe does flip everything on his head. Well, that's why I say riff off of that. Now, like, I really liked the Marvel Universe at the beginning when they were using a lot of shit from the Ultimate Universe, and they're kind of doing some of that. But the new Spider-Man movie. Smells more like the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon instead of the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. Yeah. But the Ultimate Spider-Man kind of cartoon is kind of dope at some point. They, they, they made it a team-up show, which admittedly, Spider-Man does good on team-ups. But you know what he does good on team-ups? Because he's not actually, because he does fucking shit, te shit terrible at teams. I mean, he pulls his punches. That's why one thing I love about Superior Spider-Man is when... First time Doc Ox is fighting a major villain, he dislocates fucking Scorpion's jaw. Like, he's like, oh shit, Spider-Man's been pulling his punches all these years. Yeah. Like, yeah! Holy he's... shit, holy shit, Parker's been, Parker's been going easy on me. Yeah, no, proportional strength of a spider means a lot, apparently, when you're a regular-sized human being. Well, yeah, it would. <laughs> I mean, proportional strength of pretty much anything smaller than a human would still result in a lot more power for the human. Shit, proportional strength of a chimpanzee, which is not that much smaller than a human. I would love that proportional strength of a chimpanzee. I wouldn't. It'd make me weaker. I don't know. Chimps be, like, crazy strong, like... I've heard of... You know what, you know what animals' powers I want? What? Orangutan. Nobody would ever notice. Huh. Brian's growing... Brian's, Brian's all... Brian's all hairy. Huh, Joe was all hairy, and he, uh, and he just tore someone's arm off. Oh, so yeah. business as usual, then? Yeah, pretty much. Keep, keep talking. Well. <laughs> Another thing that I wish they had done more with, or at least I wish they'd do something interesting with, the whole totem's idea from Spider-Man. Like, okay, so Spider-Man's powers are spider-themed, and like 90% of his, of, his, er, of his villains have some form of animal-themed power. Now try and tell me that you couldn't do something fun with that. You could. Uh, speaking of Spider-Mans, I watched the um, Venture Brothers season 5 and 6. Oh my god. Uh, I love their Spider-Man parody. Right? <laughs> it's like, like, cause it shoots out of like a hole right above his butt. Right. <laughs> but the like his flash tops it parable. Like throws a football at him. Like hits him. Like ah ah. He shit his pants again. <laughs> his web. I'm like, oh my god, that would happen to Peter Parker all the time. That's where his web shooter was. It really would. <laughs> it would like he shit his pants constantly. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I love Venture Brothers. Like, especially the fucking season, like, five? No, season six, yeah, when he and airs. It's unfortunate that the production schedule is whenever the produ whenever, whenever whenever the executive producer's drug bucket starts to run empty. Yeah, well, we'll get season eight soon enough, or six, seven, seven, seven. Seven, I think. 
Season 7 soon, though. Yeah. I know. Well, I just want it now. Fisher Brothers is one of those shows where I can just wait. I can just patiently wait. I want it now. I need to find the Gargantua 2 special again. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. I... And, and the thing is that if you don't watch the Gargantua 2 special, nothing that happens after it makes any fucking sense. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's like... That's, that's the funny part, because when it premiered, like... I watched the Gargantua 2 special after I watched the first episode. Right, so it's like, okay, what? Where, where the fuck did all this come from? When did he get all of this? Yeah. You know? When did Rusty Venture actually succeed at anything as an when adult? When did J.J. die? First of all, it's like... Yeah, I can't you know be... he's coming back. J.J.'s coming back. Come on, this is comic books where they're parodying here. J.J.'s coming back. Yeah, no, and, uh, what's his name? The Colonel, the Hulk monster. I thought I was a Hulk monster the whole time. I'm like, no, nah, you coming back because you is a Hulk monster now. Right. <laughs> I thought I was a Hulk. <laughs> you know what would be even funnier? If they actually riffed on that in the main comics, you know? Have 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 Thunderbolt Ross transform back right as the actual Hulk is about to is about to paste him. And just just have that be his last words. Oh I thought God. I was I a Hulk. I can't stand fucking general like Thunderbolt Ross being Red Hulk. To be perfectly honest, I can't stand pretty much everything about the yeah, about the Hulk since they decided that he was, that he actually had to be a no shit hero. I don't know. Like this is my biggest problem with him being a Hulk is that. He's, first of all, he's just the ultimate green goblin, but Pretty red. Much. Pretty much, yeah. And that was my problem with the fucking ultimate green goblin. He's just a pyrokinetic hulk. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> the ultimate green goblin at least had some synergy going on with Spider-Man, you know? But still, it like was for the first, Like for the first time in Spider-Man's history, why the hell is Norman Osborn so interested in this asshole? <sighs> Such a creeper. Well, but that's just it. You know, even even if he had this thing with teenage boys, that he he literally he's literally one of the richest men in America when he starts out. He, there is no way in hell that he has to fixate on Peter Parker. But he wants to scrap the code of the Spider-Man genome. I don't know. He's one of my well, least which, favorite which, which, villains. Which, which again is, is the ultimate one. They at least explain it. Yeah. He made Spider-Man. He made Spider-Man. And he, he wants figures to out who the fuck he is within like. Ten issues. You know? Yeah, no. It's... That, that, that was the other thing about Spider-Man that never made any sense. I mean, okay, if you're going to accept... If you're, we'll, we'll just suspend disbelief on the whole superheroes have to have secret identities thing. Especially in Peter Parker's case. Mm -hmm. Especially in Peter Parker's case. Because he's like the classical example of why they need them. Yeah, no. Why does nobody figure this shit out? Like, okay, Batman's got all kinds of high-tech toys, operates exclusively in Gotham, and is never seen under is never seen in the same room as Bruce Wayne under circumstances where it's not plausible that Bruce Wayne hired a double. I mean, that's what Bruce Wayne does though. He hires a double. He's had Superman fill in for him and Alfred and Dick. Yes. So and... we can be like Batman and Bruce Wayne photo op. Sure, <laughs> but again, even then, even then, even then, that still raises the question, who the fuck else could it be? Like, Tim Drake, like, for all props to Tim Drake for figuring it out, the amazing thing is that nobody else has. And I'm not even talking about people like Jim Gordon who has a vested interest in not knowing who the Batman is. Honestly, I believe Frank Miller, when he said in his story, was like, Jim Gordon knew who Batman was all the time, he's just... Well, and they didn't kind of, want to stop him because hint, Batman good, well, they hint, good. And they hint at it in the Nightfall storyline that Jim Gordon has some idea who Batman is because he points because he instantly spots that Azrael is not Batman, and when it's and when it's Dick and when it's Dick Grayson, he he spots that that is not Batman. Shit, Two Face spots that that is not Batman. I mean, all of Batman's villains recognize real quickly, like this is Dick Grayson. 
This is this, well. The other thing I don't get about Grayson right, and that's, and, 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 like, and that this bit isn't is, Batman. Well, the other thing I don't get about Grayson and the thing is, why didn't he just tell Gordon? Yeah, when we first met, I was Robin. I mean, because here's the thing: Gordon knows that Batman's going to die someday. Yeah. So tell him the mantle's been passed. Uh, you know what? You really need to read Batman. 6, for one thing, 6, it would increase 6. his. For one thing, it would increase his trust. It would increase his trust in Grayson as Batman. Because, you know, he's worked with him before. Yeah. Two, it would explain why he's someone different. No. Honestly, the and easy three, thing they it never would, do. It would, it would put his mind at rest about the whole, what happens when Batman dies? <laughs> well, Batman's been training his own replacements for years. Yeah, no. Read Batman 666. It's, it's, it's so... It's, it's one of my favorite issues of Batman. Because Damian Wayne... Sells his soul to the devil when he becomes Batman in an alternate timeline. And you're like, this motherfucker's effective and he kills like a motherfucker. He's got so, traps set all over Gotham. <laughs> so he's basically so he's bas so he's basically like the Azrael Batman if Azrael weren't a huge pansy. No no no. He's Azrael Batman <laughs> on like awesome sauce. <laughs> but like, honestly, Damian Wayne might be my third favorite Batman. Like, just because it's all their timeline, but he might be my third favorite. Because he was just... I like Superman 666 better. <laughs> which is which, which calls back to the fact that Superman frequently signed up with Satan in his early days. Uh, like, not even in a half-hearted, okay, I guess I have to do this way, but in a, sure, Satan, let's do this. Sign me up. I want to wreak some havoc. Oh, yeah. And it turns out there's some convoluted reason why. Like, it wasn't really Satan, it was a space alien. Or it was, or it was really Satan. It was really Satan, but he had a vested interest in making sure something nice happened to somebody. Yeah, what's his name? Frederick Wortham. His yeah. whole innocence of the sed or seduction of the innocent, or whatever. Like, I actually read that shit, and he was wasn't really anti comics. He was just anti violence, like a motherfucker. Like, <coughs> he was hella anti violence. Sure. I can buy that. But here's the thing. He was an idiot and did everything wrong. Well, yeah, his methodology was crap, but that wasn't really what I was going to say. Um, I mean, you know... The, 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 it's mostly just that... I'm sorry, if you're going to start eliminating violence from stories, you have a lot of work to do, mister. And well, comics yeah. are probably not where you should start. Yeah, he thought... You know where you should start? Make his violent and shit. Sunday like, school! Saul has slain his thousands, David his ten thousands? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, if you want to go to violence and literature, go to the Bible. I'm just saying, if you if you want to eliminate violence from entertainment, I mean, don't let's let's start with let's start with some of the oldest printed words on the planet. I love the old testament. I know it's the wrong old funny. testament is so fucking metal. Right? The Old Testament is so fucking metal. I remember, There's I remember, skulls I remember, I remember, I remember, blood. When, I remember when I was still, like, still, still, in, uh, still in the whole Mormon thing. I once commented that if they made a movie of the Old Testament... It'd be rated R! The Mormons wouldn't be allowed to go see it! It'd be, no, it'd be X-rated. You couldn't fucking... Oh, you can cut out some bits. Like, I mean, yeah, you could cut out some bits, but it wouldn't be the Old Testament. Well, you, well, you don't need to show David fucking, fucking that dude's wife. I mean, it'd be nice though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the internet has you covered, buddy. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure you find tons of fucking neighbor's wife porn. I was thinking more biblical porn, but hey, you you could definitely find that too. <laughs> but yeah, no, this shit's crazy. Like, like you know, I mean, and that's just it. I mean, reading his book was nice because. Not knowing anything about him other than he was the guy who hated comics. Which he didn't hate comics, he just hated violence. Which is something I can understand and respect. It's just comics aren't the place, to, isn't the medium to attack. There's, there's contemporary literature of that time that is full of sex and violence. And Yeah, I read Raymond Chandler too. <clears throat> I mean, you take out the sex and violence, and what have you got? 
Some dude wanders. Some dude wanders. Some dude wanders around asking pointless questions. Wait, you've read Chandler? I read Raymond Chandler. Yes. I don't uh, know. I've, re- I've read like the first. I've, re- I've only I haven't read much. I've only I've been able to get my hands on like the first on copies of like the first two, uh, the first two books of his, the first two of his Philip Marlowe books. But you know. Yeah, it's just not a lot of people have read Chandler, but yeah, no. They're lost. Yeah. Guy, guy's a decent writer. I think Jim Butcher could stand to ape him a little bit more. <laughs> But to be honest, it's because while I enjoy the Dresden Files, I do not have a terribly high opinion of Jim Butcher's work. I don't know, like... He's gotten better. He's gotten much better as the series has progressed. Basically, he's gotten better at writing books by writing books, which is the way you do it. I mean, by New Moon, he's kind of got it cracked. Yeah. He By New Moon, he has the character of... You know, Dresden figured out. I think you mean full moon. What did I say? New moon. Did I say new moon? You did. Damn. <laughs> Mizu so obsessed with with Twilight, he can't he can't he can't even believe that someone that someone would not re, would not use those titles at every opportunity. I mean, new moon and full moon. They both refer to werewolves. Okay, damn it. See, when I hear full moon, all I think of is the Sonata Artica song. Which is also about werewolves, so, you know. I mean, generally when you're talking full moons, you're talking about crazy people and werewolves. Or menstruation. Hi-yo. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm really curious about Legion, though. Because being that he's a batshit fucking crazy character, and most of the show is set in a mental hospital from what I've heard. Oh, for God's sake. But it's like, I don't know, I remember reading X-Force in the 90s when I was a kid and shit. And Legion was one of those characters that they tried to put on the X-Force for a while. But when you think about Legion and his power set, you're like... Isn't his power set like... Phoenix Force, but less fire themed. Not Phoenix Force. He he's he's well, crazy. He he has split personality disorder. Oh, okay. And okay. Each of his personalities has a different power. So he has like every fucking mutant power in the world because he has like a hundred and something okay, fucking so, personalities. Okay, so, so he's basically apocalypse that an apocalypse that doesn't have his shit together. Yeah, but he's the son of Charles and Morgan McTaggart. Yeah, no. As far as as far as as far as ch- as far as children of prominent mutants go, I'll take Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch any day of the week. Who aren't the children of Magneto anymore? Yeah, they retcon that. They're no longer the children of Mac- Magneto. Uh, that look on your face is so priceless. Maybe it's the alcohol, but that uh, I love that look. I want to take a picture of that face. Uh- <laughs> Pull down the house of Stan Lee around his ears and send them wailing into the wilderness for seven generations. Yeah, no. Yeah, they... Oh, wait, they already live in California. Never they, mind. They retconned the fuck out of the fucking them. No, why they rec- they're retconning shit like that, though. Because Marvel has the mutant or Fox has the mutants, and Marvel Disney has everything else right now. I know. No, I know why they did it. It that doesn't. That know. doesn't mean I like it. I don't like it either. Cause for years they've been like the children of Magneto. Right. And we might actually be seeing um, Polaris in a new Muse movie after Deadpool two. Okay. On the one hand, the new the new, the new mutants suck donkey balls. On the other hand, I mean, as far as children of Magneto. It gives you a Magneto clone. Yeah, it lets you have Magneto without actually, you know, bringing Magneto. Yeah. But she's a good guy in love with Bobby Drake. Which, I wonder how the fuck this is gonna go. Because a lot of those classic elements aren't gonna be there. Because Bobby Drake is part of the OG team at this point. He's part of the original trilogy before we get into the prequels and shit. 
in the origin story movie. Wait, wait, wait. The, 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 the trilogy the trilogy still canon? Okay, so. That's news. I wish I had a fucking whiteboard right now. Just explain it. Okay, so. So you have X-Men in 2000, then X2, X3 happened. Right, right, right. I'm with you so far. Well, here's the thing. As far as I knew, those three movies were basically their own thing. No, okay, so, just cause, there's a, there's a branching timeline, my friend. Oh, of course there is. Okay, this is the X-Men. so, this is the X-Men. <laughs> and so, we go back to Days of Future Past. Or not Days of Future Past, we go all the way back to X-Men First Class. Right, so explaining what the hell Charles Xavier and Magneto were doing before Charles was in the chair, so the, and, Z and before Magneto was Ian McKellen. Got yeah, it. so the timeline goes... Days of Future Past. Hey, hey, hey. Another haircut? What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it goes, goes first class, X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the timeline's fucked up, but. <laughs> as, I, as as I said, it's the X Men. Yeah. So continue. We continue. So after X Three, which was horrible, we have. Logan in the timeline. <laughs> I actually haven't seen any of the movies past uh, first Okay, class. well, or not Logan. You have Wolverine 2, the second one, where he goes to Hong Kong. You have that one in the timeline. Ah, yes, Wolverine 2. Wolverine goes to Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> or goes to Japan, yeah. Okay, Wolverine goes to Tokyo. Uh, uh, yeah. But then somewhere, the timelines get all fucked up because of time travel and Days of Future Past way down the timeline. So the timeline branches after first class, and we get Apocalypse, Age of Apocalypse, and then we get this new timeline. Where Apocalypse never happened. Where, no, we defeated Apocalypse. Woo! The original timeline, Apocalypse didn't happen, but because of time travel and shit, of Days of Future Past. Wait, 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 wait. here's a thought. So yeah. Apocalypse's gimmick, right, his deal, is that while he doesn't have any powers himself in his base state... He can copy other mutants' powers. Or not copy, but... Well, eh, basically copy. He, but, he, but unlike, say, Mimic or someone like that, he can copy multiple mutants' powers at once. Like every mutant. Within a certain radius of it. The more the way I understand Apocalypse's power is... Or is it just that he has all their powers? He has every power of every mutant that he encounters. Okay. Forever. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> So it, so it is copying, but it's a more permanent copy. Yeah. Once he meets Wolverine, he has Wolverine's powers. Once he meets Charles Xavier, he has Charles Xavier's powers. Okay. Second question. What? What? Why is he not the goddamn Phoenix? Because he wasn't awake when the Phoenix Force came to Earth. That's the easy way to explain that continuity. But, 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 but That's the never easy left. way. It never fully left. It was like, he was dormant when the Phoenix Force crashed yes, yes, Earth. Yes, 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 but... He, it never fully left. Which but it the found first... Jean Grey, and it fell in love with Jean Grey. Yes, the Phoenix Force is in love with Jean Grey. Like everyone, like every, like everything else on the team. Yes. I know. <laughs> uh, Jesus, that girl. Jesus, that Jesus, that girl gets more action than Star Fox, and his power is that he literally makes you feel good like, by being around him. Yeah. No, it is candid that the Phoenix Force. Fell in love with Jean Grey. That's why I chose Jean Grey. Yeah, like like I said, like everyone else on the team. It's like... You know, believe me, that was very much a thing in the early X-Men, is that everyone on the team loved Jean Grey. I mean... I liked Marvel Girl back in the day. Sure, but... You're also not, you know... 20 years older than her and her teacher. She was just a very gifted telepath. Yeah, obviously. I don't know, I kind of feel like... I just find it funnier that I just find it funny that the guy whose 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 who's, who's superhero handle was Eros. I mean, I'm a dovetail for a second to Harry Potter, because this is one of my big issues with Harry Potter. Is that Jenny Weasley obviously used a love spell on Harry, so she just fell in love like out of nowhere in like book four. Harry's like jealous that she's hanging out with some other dude. And it's like she clearly he had no affection for this girl. It was like, yeah. Well, okay, here's the thing. How many women did he have in his, did he actually have in his in his life that, you know, were, were already part of all the shit that goes on around him? Chow Chang. 
He had Cho Chang, who, you know, who, you know, wasn't, it was explicitly not part of the shit that went on around him all the time. I mean, he should have been with Hermione, honestly. Like, J.K. said it herself. Yeah, but at the same time, then that really means that Ron, that Ron is literally just, is literally just, is literally just Robin. I mean, honestly, I re- like, <coughs> less this com- is how I feel about, like... Less competent, less powerful, less useful. Because I watched this fan theory video or, of, like, how to rewrite the cursed child, and it makes sense that, like, Harry should have ended with Hermione. Like, the Jenny thing seems so forced, she could use a love spell on him. Or, you know, here's a thought, too. She didn't need to do any of it. Plus, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. A teenage boy in the modern age not noticing girls until he's 14. <laughs> yeah. He was busy saving the world. Yeah, that doesn't he mean he chose one. Nobody's that busy. Nobody's that Actually, busy. Neville's really the chosen one. He Harry's just... Sex drive. Nobody's that busy. Yeah, no. So, but that's how you can tell this series was written by a woman. That's how you can tell this series was written by a woman. Because I'm sorry, no teenage boy on Earth waits is going to wait until he's 14 to start noticing girls. I mean, he showed interest Stop in talking. lots of girls. It's just no, he didn't. His interest in fucking Jenny was like oh, out I, of nowhere. I'm not saying I'm not saying it wasn't. Although, like I said, she was already a part of his life from book two onwards. Because here's the thing: book two, the entire the entire okay, the entire thing of Voldemort taking another run at Harry Potter was done through Ginny. I mean, like, yeah. Can I, can, I, can I see your lighter real quick? Yeah. No, it was like... Honestly, I feel like Fred and George didn't really care. They already considered Harry a part of the family. They hooked her up with a love spell. And she used it on Harry. Okay, but here's the thing. Love spells also don't last very long. So why did his stick around long enough for them to, for them to produce two children? She kept dosing his ass. I don't think so. Mostly because if he's working as an R, right? Like, they mentioned that that's what he does. He works as an aura. Presumably he's away from home for more than a few days at a, at a stretch from time to time. I mean, shit, Arthur Weasley managed that shit. And Arthur Weasley's whole thing was making sure that wizards didn't try to enchant a toaster. Okay, but in book three, Mrs. Weasley says she used a love potion back in her day. Basically giving Jenny permission. I'm not saying she didn't. I'm saying there are plenty of other explanations that fit the facts. No, no, nothing fits the facts other than love spell. Love spell. Jenny Weasley used a love spell. Also, I kind of fi- also I kind of also I kind of fig- also I kind of figured that that whole love spell thing was sort of a joke. Nah, she's a love spell. Want to get Arthur Weasley? Yeah, <laughs> good choice. I Me. Mean, honestly, it was like it's hard to picture it, but when you really think about your par- parents. At some point in time, they were attracted to someone. Sure. Granted. Like, it's like, we wouldn't be here if someone didn't be like, oh, yo, that person over there is hot. I want to fuck that. Yeah. Like, and it's like, I've seen my aunts over the years. I'm like, I can clearly see how my mom and all her sisters were quite attractive in their day. It makes me creeped out that they were attractive ever, but sure. yeah, like right. No, no. I'm not, again. <sighs> but here's the thing. One doesn't matter. Two, and more importantly, I have to admit that honestly, I kind of figured she was going for something like that as early as well as early as book four. That like, Harry was not going to end up with Hermione. Like, ah, uh, that's, that's what they should have been with. Like, uh, I mean, I like the Cursed Child where Hermione's a minister of magic. It really needed, though, a Harry Hermione affair or something. Like, because there's one point, like, Hermione's like, Harry, would you like some toffee? And I'm like, is toffee a euphemism? He's like, no, no thanks, I'm good. And I'm like, is it a euphemism? Nah, it's literal fucking toffee. God damn it. Toffee would have been a perfect euphemism for. Hey, I mean, do you perfect, have some? I mean, to be perfectly, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm kind of surprised Hermione Granger didn't end, didn't end up as the Minister of Magic in the actual timeline. Right. Hermione is like. Then again, she's not really good at getting other people to listen to her. I don't know. I mean, consider how consider how much shit Harry and 
Harry and Ron get into simply because they didn't stop and listen to Hermione. You know, these are her two best friends. I mean, yeah. You know, if anybody, and you'd think that if anybody would know, okay, maybe we should stop and listen to what Hermione has to say for, you know, five minutes before we do this, then, uh, so much shit would have been avoided. Yeah, no, one of my other favorite theories is that you have to ask to be in Gryffindor. Because under any other circumstances, Ron would have been Hufflepuff, and Hermione would have been in Ravenclaw. Harry would have been in Slytherin. Yeah, Harry would have been and should have been in Slytherin. But they all are just like, I want to be in Gryffindor. Well, maybe that's the test. Yeah, you have to ask to you be know, in Gryffindor. The Order of Paladins doesn't walk around saying, You there, small child, you shall join us. And you there, small child, you shall join us. You know, no, you have to show up at the monastery. You have to show up outside the temple and sit there for, and sit there for six days. What, what, asking, every day coming in to ask to be let in. Well, they tell you, no, fuck off, we're full. I enjoy being a Slytherin. So do I. But honestly, or I should I, say, so would I. I'd, I'd, end, up in, I'd end up in like, Ravenclaw. Hufflepuffs are apparently the stoners because their house is right next to the kitchen. Oh please, that just means they're selling to the rest of the student body. <laughs> honestly, I always figured me as a drug dealer, I'd be a Slytherin. Like I'd be really into herbology. <laughs> <laughs> Growing my own wizard strains of weed. <coughs> at which point, at which point, some, at which point, someone like me leans out the window. Asio marijuana. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! You gotta fucking pay for that. <laughs> pay for what? And probably close the window so you can't just summon it back. <laughs> mm -hmm. I that's. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Potions and herbology. That's what you'd need to be to be a wizard drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Not even potions really. Like, potions only if you're like making crack and meth. I guess you can do L S D. Ooh, wizard L S D be fun. <coughs> wizard L S D And now we're cooking the gas. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing like I'm just picturing like this is a couple of wizards on that uh down Nocturne Alley. Where you know instead of where you know instead of uh, where you know instead of selling dark 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 instead of selling you know dark magic and shit like that, we're and meddling in the dark arts. We're just we're just we're just selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's like I mean that's kind of why I'm excited for the Fantastic Beasts trilogy because I want to like there's got to be something in the Harry Potter verse that bites you and makes you trip balls. <coughs> There's gotta be yeah, some I think Hermione sort of... calls out a couple of things at one point or another like, in that. Usually yeah. connection with Hag with Hagrid's class. Like, honestly, I'd probably be like, if I went to school in Hogwarts with them, I would've been friends with Neville. Because Neville was really good in potions <laughs> class once he got a new wand. Well, and once, well, and once he, well, and once he, went, well, and once Snape decided to focus, to, to focus on tormenting someone else. Or well, once, you know, Snape stopped being a factor. No, honestly, I only believe Neville was bad at magic because he was using his dad's wand for the first three books. Like, the first three books he was using his dad's wand. He sh it was like, your wand picks you, bro. You well, how did you know his dad's wand didn't pick him? I mean, but he was bad at magic. Yeah, well, here's the thing. But he that... got good as soon as he got his own wand. Well, but here's the thing. Yeah, see, when you got about a when you gotta ch Consider how many chosen, wa chosen ones are in fact absolute shit at everything until they get their magic item. Yeah, no. I mean, I do believe Neville was the real chosen one. And the whole Harry Potter thing was was just because, okay, well, here's the thing. He had a name. He had a name. And marketing. And marketing, and more to the point, more to the point, he had a protection spell that Voldemort wasn't getting through for seven years, which gave them seven years when Voldemort was focusing all of his efforts on, get that kid, while well, they've got the real chosen one over here, completely safe. I mean, but though, I mean, it's funny though, because by like, was it book five? No, by like book one. Like, because of fucking Voldemort <coughs> creating all the horcruxes and shit, Harry 
is that accidental Horcrux is more Voldemort than Voldemort. Yeah, well, that's they, they do call that out in book seven is why the Sorting Hat wanted to put him in Slytherin. Like, he should have been a Slytherin. He would have been an excellent villain. He would have been more powerful, I think, in the Slytherin how. Like, even as a good guy, still in Slytherin, he would have been great. Well, that's true, because, I mean, they do mention something like two-thirds of Slytherin House joined the fight against Voldemort. That's just it. It's like, the only wizards from Slytherin that are featured are assholes. They always show the assholes of my house. <laughs> well, because your house is asshole house. They're all assholes. Not all of us. It's just we have a reputation of being assholes because have a reputation we produce being... a lot of dark wizards. Yes, and dark wizards are not usually nice people. But we're not all dark wizards. <laughs> it's like, I'm not a dark wizard. I'm just a gray wizard. <laughs> yeah, well, guess what happens to gray wizards? They either go black or get or get tossed into a pit with a, with a fire demon. <clears throat> That's what we do to gray wizards around here. But gray wizards come back as white wizards when they get tossed in a fiery if, pit. If they beat the demon. <laughs> They don't. Presumably they just stay in the pit. Uh, I mean, how many great witches do you think we went through before Gandalf came back, huh? I mean... And he's literally Odin. Like, that's actually one of Odin's names, is Gandalf. <laughs> he's Wandelf. I mean, we did lose a green wizard or two. Yeah. That was, that was, like, my favorite part of The Hobbit, though. Radagast the Brown? Yeah, Radagast the Brown, running through the fucking forest. It was nice to actually see Radagast for once. Like, that was dope. We never actually see him. It was, like... In the books, they just, Gandalf just mentions they talked to Radagast. I've never finished reading a token Aragorn's book. Aragorn's met him once. Like, I've never physically read a token book because of the small print. I've done the audiobook for all of them. But the small print makes it very hard to read for me. <laughs> Shit, the only character other than Gandalf that we know he's interacting with extensively is Bjorn. Mm. Who mentions who mentions him as a friend, but given that Bjorn is so is so asocial that he literally lives in the middle of nowhere by himself. <clears throat> no, it's yeah. What was I about to say? No, it was nice to see Radagast. Yeah, no, that was a fun part of the Hobbit movies. Like, I mean, the Hobbit movies are kind of... <coughs> Why do you need three movies for one book? <coughs> like, what I want to know is, why did we need Legolas and his girlfriend? Uh, I mean, or Legolas is there, like... No, he wasn't. He was, hang he was hanging out in Mirkwood. Oh, right, yeah, that was one thing that was off. I yeah, think... have, 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 him show up dur have him show up during the Elven, during the Elven ca capture scene or chase scenes or something. Or during the feast scenes, for God's sake. Just have him walk <clears throat> around the city and shit. Right, don't, right, you know, he doesn't need to interact. But yeah, I mean, I guess they just wrote in Orlando Bloom and Onions for, you know, let's tie together for the fans. Except that the fans already uh, the fans already know that this well, whole, this is not a new book or a new fandom. Let's tie it in for the people who only watched the movies and didn't read the books. Yeah, I mean fuck those people, but that's like when I see changes like that. That's why I just have to scream in my head. It's like this is for okay, the okay. assholes who didn't read then the books. Then why do they need his girlfriend there? I mean, his girlfriend who develops a crush on one of the dwarves. That you know is going to die later horribly in Moria. Yeah, Elf Dorf love. You need that. No, you don't. I mean, you need that little love subplot you for any major Hollywood movie now. You really don't. They've, they've always worked it in. I know. It's, like, it's equally unnecessary. It's like, I know. As a fan, you're like, we don't need a love subplot. As a studio, they're like, love subplot. Need to grab all markets and demographics. Nah, it's bullshit. I know. Want another beer? No, nah, I'm still working my way through this one. <laughs> Dude, it's a little sweet for me. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, no. I'm like... I don't know. I really don't want to bike home drunk, but I might just bike home drunk.
You realize that the, the city buses come equipped with bike racks on the front, right? They do come equipped with bike racks on the front. But my bike got stolen off one of them racks before. I fucking can't stand Chicago niggas sometimes. Well, you're not in Chicago. Yeah, but Chicago niggas be, like, thirsty no matter where they at. I was, oh, man, this shit was funny as hell. I biked to all these by my house, uh, like, last week. <laughs> and I was all, I was unlocking my bike. Security came out and was yelling at some people that just walked out. And it was like, I know you stole them drawers. Like, they had stole underwear from all these. I was laughing. It was like, that's a new one. I was like, that's a real ratchet Chicago shit. Right? It's like, holy fucking shit. Well, congratulations, folks. You've hit the bottom of the socioeconomic barrel when you're stealing underwear from Aldi's. Come on, at least come steal it from Walgreens. I mean, I understand stealing underwear from Victoria's Secrets. I've known girls who've done that before. But stealing underwear from all of these? It's a discount grocery store. Have some self-respect. Right, steal from <laughs> quality underwear. So, like, why do you want cheap-ass underwear? So, apparently, at my work, you know what the plan is? What, what? For overnights? They're gonna, they want to put three people back on when we reopen overnight. One person's job will be to sit by the back door and keep an eye for people going in and out. <laughs> Anybody dodgy comes in, sound the alarm. <laughs> I, I kind of want that job. <clears throat> I'd be like, you dodgy? <laughs> well, as long as, well, as you, people. well, as long as you don't mind work, working eight day, ten, hour, ten hour days and eight days in a row... Oh, that'd be hell. Eight days in a row? Give me, like, at least, like, five days in a row. That seems more reasonable. Five days in a row? Eight days on, six days off. Oh. The exact same schedule as mine, except I'm gonna be up front, where at, le where, at least, where at least I'll have something to do all night. Six days, and then... Oh, six days on, and how many? Six days off. Six days on, six days off? No, six days on, eight days off. Eight days on, six days off. Eight days on, six days off. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's my work schedule. That's why you never see me. <laughs> that's why you pretty much only see me on Saturdays for, like, a week, for, for some weeks. And then other weeks, like, yeah, let's hang out. Yeah. It's not that I'm avoiding you. It's that I literally do not have the time or energy. So you go back to work Sunday? Yeah. Every Sunday. I work every Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Down at the Georgia Dome. Come see Monster Truckus. Come see, come see me. Body slamming, body slamming some dumbass. Who, who, some dumbass who thought he was slick, trying to, trying to, trying to slip a, do, a dozen old spice, a dozen old spice things down, down his pants. You know, I mean, my homie once stole, <laughs> he stole Nair from the fucking <laughs> oh, we get that Walgreens, uh, the Uptown Walgreens. Oh, and, and uh, that would be mine. <laughs> that would be mine. The one on Hennepin's the one you work at? Yeah. Okay. Probably before I got there. Yeah, no, this was like 07. Okay, yeah, that's well before I was He working. stole Nair from me. Uh, to be perfectly honest, if he had stolen from one of my shifts... They'd be like, well, shit. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I'm not a cop. I'm not, I've am not. i got better things to do than chase him down. But, you know. I mean, if I was a kid, I'd shop with more. <laughs> yeah, no, if I was a minor, I'd shop with all the fucking time still. <coughs> I mean, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. But if you know the right place. Sure. I feel like I could go to your Walgreens and shop with and not get caught. <laughs> mm. Depends on who's on. Depends on how alert they are. Depends on how much of a shit we give that day. Which usually is tied into how much other shit we have to do. Like, honestly, I just kind of want to go and steal some Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. Nah, I'm fucking around. Nah, it's just that uh, we got a manager there, a little Mexican dude. That man throws a punch like you would not believe. <laughs> and he will punch you out if he catches you stealing. <laughs> he will beat your ass. 
Uh, That'd be hilarious. Yeah, but I'd be kind of torn by a conflict of interest. On the one hand, I kind of want to jump in and help uh, and help and help one of them, but I'm not really sure who I want to help. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, one of these guys is my friend, but he did get caught stealing, and the other one's my boss, but he really doesn't need my help. <clears throat> Honestly, I've been stuck with shit in a long time. The last thing I stole was that long ass utility extension cord. <coughs> for that construction site down the street. It was just hanging there over the fence. Over. Not on. Over. It was too easy. <laughs> Damn, what the fuck did I do with that shit? Well, then, of course, there was uh, the, the family that came in to steal. Oh, I love those. Mom, dad, little kid. I caught one when I was working at Target. The whole family was standing. <coughs> well, the kid was standing lookout. But <coughs> Heavenly Mama thought she could get that one, that one last, uh... That one last, that one last bag of hair extensions down the front of her shirt. No, I was working at the Target in Midway. So I walk, so I walk around the corner, and I'm like, "Ma'am, I'm, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to ask, to pu- ask you to pull all that stuff out." So I mean, she wasn't even being subtle about it, unless her tits are literally constructed as tiny boxes. Then, <clears throat> oh, she had box shaped tits. <laughs> That's a dead giveaway, right? That's a dead giveaway. And then, as as, as they're being escorted out. The, the little the little girl just starts cussing me out. Yeah. Wait, what color were they? White or black? Black. Yeah. All except for Dad. I was going to say white trash, but that also sounds very ghetto. <laughs> that sounds very Chicago. Oh, Dad was white trash. <laughs> it was like family projects. Dad, trailer park. <laughs> Not pretty much. <laughs> Uh, that's how that shit go. Well, I was looking at the Midway Target in high school. I'm just, I, well, and I, I wasn't so much upset by it. It's just like, well, what the hell did you expect? This was a getaway at Chicago family. I could hear they was in Chicago for the way the mama was talking and shit. I'm like, <laughs> but the kids was still in. It's like, I'm talking to my LP. I was like, you seeing this shit? It's like, yeah, I'm seeing this shit. It's like, the kid was still in. The dad was still in shit. It was like, the teenage daughter was still in shit. Everybody was still in shit. And me and my LP just like, you want to call the police now or wait till they start walking out the door? I was like, call the police now. I'm waiting for them. <laughs> so we had three squad cars waiting outside of Midway Target for these motherfuckers when they walked out the building. <laughs> and they're like, can you cassette back in the building? <laughs> but they weren't. They weren't that slick. It was like <coughs> it was five of them still in shit. Well, and then uh, one time, <clears throat> this one guy. This was back when we just moved to the new location. I'm. Re- I've got a line of like. I'm, I've got a line of like six people deep. So, fuck it. I'm not leaving my register for a while. <clears throat> Comes in. Walks to the back of the store. Just starts grabbing these big three-gallon things of Tide. And then just hauls ass back to the front. Like, he's just running flat out. Trips. Lands flat on his face with all the alarms on these things. We have these little electronic lo- alarms yeah. off them. You know, the yeah. type, type of thing. <clears throat> the ones you need the T-lock for and shit. Right. <laughs> uh, we got a mag lock, actually. Yeah, the little mag shit. We had those everywhere I've worked. Right. As far as retail goes. Right. Well, it's, as I understand, well, to be fair, this is my first retail job, so. Um, but so, he trips, goes flat on his face, all the things start going off. <clears throat> He's got tie bleach all over his front. Ah. And, I, and I'm just sitting here thinking, oh, you poor fucker. You're not going to have any skin left in, in, about, in about 15 minutes. That is and then, and then, my boss comes hurtling out of the back, sees what's going on, and proceeds <laughs> to pile drive the motherfucker. Oh, 
hell no. Right in the small of his back, and I'm just thinking, oh, great. Yeah, well, I was at the uh, Brooklyn Park Walmart. We were, me and my mom were shopping and shit, and we were grabbing some Tide and shit. And this dude stood in the Tide Pods. Like, he opened the, like, big box and was stealing the little pods and put <laughs> stuff in his pocket. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's like, people don't give a fuck. It's like, hope that shit don't burst or you can kiss your balls goodbye. It was the type of the fabric softener and shit. Oh, yeah. Eh, well, whatever. I was like, I ain't gonna say shit, but I ain't gonna help you get out. <laughs> like, you gonna get caught. Like, people be stealing shit. Well, stop stealing shit. Right. That's like, if you can't pay for it, don't buy it. You, yeah, you ain't meant to have it. <laughs> right. Well, what is it, what is it, what is it with, um, what is it with detergent, though, that makes it such a appealing target? It's expensive. It really isn't. Actually, uh, this is what I did once while I was homeless. <laughs> um, I went to the laundromat that used to be on Wendell in Uptown. I don't know, it's like a cafe now or some shit, but... It's, it's completely unmanned, completely like unmanned coin operated laundry mat. No cameras. It's oh, they're not worried about anything going on there. I like pop the lock on the soap vending machine, <laughs> and I took all the laundry detergent. Like, <laughs> to do what with? To wash laundry at a friend's house. Oh, fair enough. I was homeless. <laughs> I was homeless and broke. <laughs> Well, and the thing is that we usually try to cut them some kind of break. Like, you know, we have these homeless guys who come who, who come in who come in periodically, and they always get they always buy a they always buy a thing of the yellow Listerine, the generic brand, not the actual Listerine. But the, the... they trying to get drunk, Jack. Well, no shit. I was in St. Joe's Children's Home with some guys that like to drink Listerine and get drunk. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it's not that serious to get drunk. It's like, it's always been easy to just walk up to anybody at a liquor store and be like, hey, bruh, hey, can you buy me a beer? Uh, Hand them the these, money? These, these days in a lot of liquor stores, that shit will get you arrested. I know that um, liquor store... In Diggy Town, over by uh, not Diggy Town, it's like the campus. You know where the Burger King and that shit is the yeah. Chinese or Japanese food place, right? By the light rail. When there used to be a plasma center over there, I used right. to get plasma there in college. And like maybe like every other week, there'd be this Asian kid asking, you know, buy him some alcohol and shit. But every time he asked me, there's like always a cow cart in sight. I was just like, I ain't 21, bro. I'm sorry, I can't help you. You know, it was. <laughs> <coughs> Shit, it's like I went in there and bought myself a 12 pack. It's like, I can't help you, bro. Because that kid just like, somebody was like, you're a plant. This is Diggy Town. There's fucking squad cars every fucking where. You seem like a plant. Right. I'm Gucci. Although, fucking, what was it, Chicago Lake Liquor? I, they have a back door. And I did that once, took the guy's money, walked out the back door, and hopped on a bus. <laughs> I was like, I'm, because he smelled like a plant. He smelled like a plant. Right. He smelled like a plant, and I was like, I'm, I'll take your 25 bucks real quick. Right, and then he just, yeah, fuck it, bye. <laughs> fuck it. I hopped on the bus, bought a sack of weed on the bus. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, 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 did I tell you about the time Lice Boy? Did I tell you about Lice Boy? Lice Boy, oh shit. So he was a guy who'd come through about once every rotation. Usually Saturday, Sunday. Come in about 7 in the morning, head back to the Lice section. He always had the, like this really, really badly infested scalp. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> like, so bad that you could see the meat under the skin. Oh. So he clearly needed this shit. So he'd go back to the, he'd go back to the lice treatment section, and he'd usually try to grab something. Once, my boss at the time caught him, 
sh- rubbing it into rubbing it onto his head back there, tucked into the tucked into a little recess display. Like he climbed up in there and then started shampooing up his head. <laughs> right? Well, the thing is, they always came in. And he tried the most ridiculous disguise. Like, one time he came in in this stupid hat. In this stupid trucker hat. And then I just walk out there. Dude, you gotta get the hell out of here. Well, what, what do I do? Man, you come in here every week trying to, st- try, try, trying to, trying to steal <clears throat> lice shampoo and you're pulling this shit? Well, it wasn't me. Well, then I'd sue your face for slander. Get the hell out. I'd and sue your face for slander. Oh my goodness. You're hilarious. <laughs> I'd sue your face for slander. Well, that's what I'd do if I were in his case, because his face is saying he's guilty as hell. <laughs> but, um... But, um, so, he said, so, <clears throat> one day, after I guess he got a good haul, I'd been in the back, so I didn't give a shit about what he was up to. I'm leaving work, I'm heading for the bus stop. Lice Boy comes over, and offers to sell me a baggie of weed. For 20 bucks. Did you buy it? I mean, no, obviously. What no. What am I saying? Why would I buy weed? Why would I buy weed from from somebody this sketchy? It's like you don't seem to smoke weed. I don't know why I asked that. Well, it's not that I won't, but um, I'm certainly not buying it from him. Yeah, no. <clears throat> but here's the thing. This is in this is it. This is this was the, this was the place up on up on Hennepin, up up, up next to Kowalski's. There's a holiday right next door. We were in the parking lot of the holiday. Do you know what else the holiday featured early in the morning? About seven cops. Uh-huh. Seven or eight cops. So there are squad cars parked in the Kowalski's parking lot. <coughs> They'd stop in there when they were on break or whatever. They'd all be just sitting there drinking. They'd all just sitting there drinking coffee, talking. <clears throat> And I'm like, dude, there are the better part of a dozen cops within shouting distance right now, and you're trying to sell me weed. That's the best place to sell weed sometimes. Right where the cops can see you? So when I got my second littering ticket in Minnesota, it was a complete accident. I got out of my homie's car, my empty pack. It wasn't empty. I had, my cig- I had one cigarette and my lighter in it. <coughs> Fell my lap. Didn't even pay attention. Went in, bought a pack of cigarettes, came out, got in the car. As soon as we pulled off, cop pulls us over. It's like, no, I pulled you over. I'm like, no, I'm not driving. <laughs> like, it's like, what'd you do, ducky? Yeah. He's like, you littered. I was like, what'd I do? He's like, you dropped a pack of cigarettes. I was like, I didn't even know I dropped a pack of cigarettes. But when I got out the car to walk there, there was two dudes at the essay who were like, hey, you want to buy some weed? Like, wow, wasn't subtle on the down low. Right. <sighs> get, I get a littering ticket for an accident. I'm like, this some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. My homie's Asian driving. I'm black. I'm me. Right. I'm like, this some bullshit. Yeah, this some bullshit. <clears throat> There's two white dudes that sell weed right there. Oh, there you go. Two white dudes. <laughs> nothing suspicious. Nothing suspicious about white dudes. Nothing suspicious about white dudes with dreadlocks. <laughs> oh lord. Like, well, like, like. I've got nothing against. I've got nothing against white dudes who want to wear dreadlocks. Whatever. It's their hair. I hate all white people with dreadlocks. I will state that for the record. White people with dreadlocks are nasty and gross. If your assy ass dreadlock drips in my coffee, I will go off and start a scene in the coffee okay, shop. Be, okay, to be fair, if it drips in my coffee, then yeah, <laughs> we're having words, friend. It's like... And by words, I mean I'm going to break your fucking nose. Yeah, but, no. You know, At the old spy house on Lindale, not Lindale, on um, Nicollet, like, this white dude with dreads, his fucking dreadlock dipped in my coffee and I snapped. Like, oh no, that, that's some fucking bullshit. He, that, that is absolutely correct. 
And then it was like like six months later, I was watching comedian Ralphie May special, and same thing happened to him. And I'm like, it's not just me. No. White people with dreads are fucking nasty. No, to be fair, that is kind of what the dreadlock was designed for. Like, I mean, dreads are beautiful, and like people of color. Like, I've seen lots of black people with great, nice dreadlocks. Lots of Jamaican and Haitian people with Jamaican, beautiful dreadlocks, but Jamaican I've man. never seen white people with nice dreadlocks. They always look nasty and gross. <laughs> what, uh, I'm sorry, when you said that, I, I immediately thought of Jamaica Man. Jamaica Man. Tell you about, did I tell you about him? No. So, out in Seattle, there's this one dude who every day at about 5 o'clock would come running past... Would come running past the uh, the the uh, um, the bar the, the the front room of the bar I like to hang out in, and could watch him run past. Rain or shine, no matter what the temperature was outside, he only ever wore two things: a pair of lycra jogging shorts and a flag of Jamaica tied and a flag the flag of Jamaica tied around his neck like a cape. That sounds like the dopest superhero if he's if his superpower is like shooting joints at you. Uh, not shooting. He handed he did hand them out though. Yeah, see, that's like the to dopest. Everybody, should he handed me a joint. Yeah. I want to get out. I want to get back out west as soon as possible. And this was before it was legal, mind you. <sighs> Funnily enough, after it became legal. Um. He was doing this thing, you know, handing out joints during one of his... He, apparently he was doing this to exercise. He did this to exercise. <coughs> one of the Seattle PD came up and asked us if he was hassling us or anything like that. I'm like, no, 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 man. He's, he's cool. He's cool. <clears throat> one thing I always found baffling about the Seattle PD. What's that? I was always the one they approached to talk to. It's like, I've been to Seattle a few times, but I've never dealt with the PD out there. Well, don't. In 2014, or tw yeah, it was 2014, there were 90 cases of, there were 90, there were 90 cases of ape has killed ape. 90 people were killed by other people. 60 of them were police on police, are police on civilian? Yep. Uh, kind of a surprise. And they were going through a huge stink right around the time that the whole, right around the time that the fact that the police are actively stalking black people started becoming public knowledge to white people. Yeah, white people love to think racism doesn't exist until a Trayvon Martin happens. Well, it's mostly because we've been told that racism is, you know, running around screaming the n-word at black people in public. Racism is a lot more subtle than that. Well, you know that, and I know that. But that's because I'm vaguely intelligent, and you're black. And I've <laughs> suffered from it my whole life. See, also, you're black. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <clears throat> yeah, no. Fuck, I want a real cigarette. I kind of wish I didn't spend all my money on beer and rolling papers, but... I needed both of those. <laughs> I don't need cigarettes. I can let you have a hit on this. What flavor are you smoking, sir? Elf jizz. Uh. Careful, it's a little harsh. Though, I suppose to a veteran weed smoker, it's not that bad. I guess I am a veteran at this point. I've been a regular weed smoker since 22. I'm 27 now. Well, I'm qualified. <coughs> That's five years of not being sober for more than a week. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, no, for the last... No, six years now, I think. Yeah, no, like six years now. I have not been sober as far as marijuana for more than a week. I easily go like... A month to three, four months without consuming alcohol. But weed? That's a daily thing. Like, <clears throat> Yeah, well, you know. It's like, 420 was dope as shit. Like, put, 
It's like for me, four twenty is just another day. Like, <coughs> well, to be fair, that's kind of how that who don't smoke, who don't smoke much weed tend to view it too. It's like I smoke weed every day. It's like I wake up. Usually within the first hour of waking up, I smoke weed. It's like by lunchtime, I'm smoking again. And then I'm smoking for 420, either local time or West Coast. <coughs> like, I wake up high, and I stay high all fucking day, because I really don't know how to function sober, because functioning, functioning sober sucks. It's like, you're overwhelmed with anxiety. Like, at least I am functioning sober. Like, life gives me so much anxiety. That sucks. Without weed, it's like, I couldn't but function. Like, like I said, Seattle PD, like one time, right? There was some shit going down right outside the hookah lounge I was smoking at. <clears throat> so, they're, so, they, so they show up, and they're, you know, they're questioning witnesses. They come inside to see if anyone in here knew anything. If anyone in the, in the, in the lounge had heard anything. Or knew anything about it. Nobody did. <clears throat> I'm up there. I'm up. I'm up at the counter, you know, talk, chatting with the chatting with the guy chatting with the guy working work, working that night because it was kind of a slow night. <clears throat> and he he's the owner, right? He owns it. He runs it. Whatever. Oh, that's nice. They walk. They walk up to me. The the cop walks up to me, and is like, uh, excuse me, sir. We're, we'd like to ask some questions about something that happened outside your outside your establishment. Like, they assumed you were the owner? Right. <laughs> I wasn't even sitting on the right side of the counter. Like, and, I, and I glance over at him, and he is just... They assumed you were the beard, because you had... I assume you had a beard. I had a beard? I mean, you generally are a beard-faced gentleman. Well, because I always have to shave twice a day. But so they walked up to me. I was on the wrong side of the counter. They just assume you worked there. They, well, they just assumed that I was the owner. That's a whole different kind of racism, sir. I know. <laughs> That's over him, and he is just livid. Like, uh, not at me. At them, but that's you know, hilarious. He, you know, after, after they left, he was like, sorry, sorry if I came across as angry at you. I really wasn't. I was, no, no, man, this is your place, and they walked up to me to ask that question. I'd be fucking pissed. It's like... Yeah, no. Just right. because you're a bearded white gentleman, they assume you own the place. Right. When in fact, the far better dressed and more far more well-to-do West African gentleman across the counter and next to the cash register was in fact the owner. They assumed he was your employee. That's that's a little racist. I mean, Isn't that's it. a. I mean, that's a completely different kind of racism. All like, hey, we're assuming this white guy. Owns this fucking hookah bar. Right. We're assuming this black guy is his employee. Because <laughs> we, um, we all know black people don't own businesses, right? I mean, we all know black people don't own hookah bars. <laughs> Especially not, you know, Middle Eastern guys. He, that's the funny part is he... Like... He, he was... He, he, sure, he was West African by descent... But he, but his, but his family had been living in the Middle East for like the for like for like the last century. It's like I'm just saying, every guy who I know owns every fucking hookah bar owner, which is seven that I know, is from the Middle East. Yeah, well, you know, like apparently over there they're pretty common. Like especially since especially since a lot of countries started really cracking down with the Sharia law shit, and actual bars became increasingly rare. It's like, yeah, no, it's like, I don't know anyone, I know white people that own, like, I actually, herb I actually, shops. I or, actually know some white guys who, who, own, who own a chain of hookah bars. Like, I don't know any white people that own hookah bars, but I, I know, vape shops, I know people that own vape shops no, and vape I, lounges. Like I said, like I, said I, know, I know a couple of white guys that actually do own, that actually do own a, a chain of reasonably successful hookah bars. I mean, I'm sure there are white dudes that... Have like traveled or fell in love with hookah one way or another that yep. opened up bars. Yeah, I haven't done that. I've yet, just but... never met any. Yeah, you're the. You keep saying like you're the only person you know 
that didn't travel to the Middle East and fall in love with hookah. No, I did that close at home. Like it was my like it was one of my favorite parts of like the Egypt trip. Because everyone wanted to do bullshit ass <clears throat> touristy things. Let's go see the pyramids. Let's not. That's not what I wanna do when I'm on in Egypt. I'm in Egypt for three fucking weeks. I'm fifteen. What the fuck do I wanna do? I wanna took talk to girls and smoke hookah. Like I wanna visit the fucking like you want libraries to actually, and shit. I want to you, get knowledge and high. Right. Yeah, I want right. my mind to be elevated and my spirit to be elevated. Right. But you know, right. You know. But look at looking at looking. And you, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they look very impressive in person in a way the photos just don't just don't convey. But it's like I guess. But you, the fact is, you've seen the photos. You've seen the pictures. You know what they look like. Right. It's like I don't really want to see the pyramids. I want. There's so much. Awesome culture in Egypt. Well, yeah. That people miss because they're doing the bullshit touristy things. Well, like, yeah, that's, that's kind, of, kind of been my thing about it, too. Is like, okay, great, I can find all kinds of information on what the place was like, you know, 10,000 years ago. That's that's great, I guess. But what's it like now? It's, oh, it's such a beautiful place. <clears throat> such a, like, so... People are so fucking nice there. You think that, like... People be like, oh, you're American and shit, but people are just like, you're a person. Okay, you look like fair, us. Pro- okay, to be fair, they'd probably be like, oh, look, it's an American to me. Yeah, to you. But to me, they're like, you look like us. Like, let us teach you about your history, your culture, your heritage. Uh, teach you about the world. Teach you about things that you don't have a perspective on. And okay, that's, that's one fair. of the things I loved about Egypt. Okay, like, that's fair. I mean, you know. I've always wanted to go tour Europe. Uh, yeah. I mean, Europe has such old, rich history, and I would well love... because here, well because here's the thing. <clears throat> with that, Europe is where my family came from. Yeah. And that's where my that's where my cultural and genealogical roots lie. Don't get me wrong; I'd love to go see the Middle East. I don't think it'd be especially safe for me to do so right now, which is kind of a shame. But I would really like to see the place, preferably before ISIS bulldozes all of, bulldozes all of it to, to bulldoze all of it because because it doesn't conform because it doesn't conform to their ideology. I don't know. You could pass the Lebanese, I think. Probably could, but that but probably could, but that level of dishonesty. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's cultural appropriation, and then there's whatever the hell that is. Maybe maybe I, maybe, I, maybe I could claim to be trans ethnic. You are not Rachel Dolezal. I am not. I am not that much of an idiot. You're right. I probably could pass for Lebanese until I opened my mouth. Yeah. At which point the accent would be like, oh, nope, it's another fucking American white person. No, I'd be like, I grew up in America and I want to experience the homeland. <laughs> yeah, no. No, that level of deception might get you killed. <laughs> Deception, nothing. It's only deception if they fall for it. I'm pretty sure it'd get me killed because I was just because I was trying it. <clears throat> but you know, I mean, like Iran. Holy shit! Do you realize there's been a, Iran has has had civilization longer than just about anywhere else on the planet? Yeah, no, it's the ball sack of civilization. You know, there has <laughs> been there have been civilization. There were civilizations in Iran. When the re- when literally everywhere else on the planet, the highest level of technology was the sharp rock. <clears throat> hey, the sharp rock is still a valuable weapon. Sure, but, <laughs> you know we kind of have better ones. Oh yeah, we have way better weapons than the sharp rock. I honestly like the drone missiles. Because <coughs> nothing says "die infidel" like a drone missile. It's true. We consider you so filthy, we won't, we consider you so filthy and unclean, we won't even show you our faces as we kill you. No, why? Why? It's like, <clears throat> I remember, the, like, The Simpsons made a joke in one of the older episodes when Bart goes to the, like, Naval Academy or whatever, and they're like, future wars will be fought by drone robots and shit, and you guys will be the pilots of these robots, and I'm like, ha, that is so going to be the truth. <coughs> And now it is the fucking truth. It's like, we, as Americans, like, it's like, yeah, we got tons of PTSD from fucking drone, drone pilots, but... Well, because here's the thing, and it, 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 
we can wipe out a whole country in like a night. Yeah, go America. Yeah, I'm not really sure that's power we should have. I mean, do you not hear the cynicism in my voice? No. But, <laughs> I'm joking. Of course I do. I'm agreeing with you. Like, I mean, yes, we have this power, and we can basically buttfuck anyone we want, anytime we want, as a, like, imperial power, because that's what we fucking are. That's what empires do. Like, I mean, America, we are too big to succeed at this point. <laughs> so we're way too fucking big to fail. <laughs> it's true, though. Here's the thing. If America goes down the shitter, I promise you, within 12 hours, the rest of the world follows. I mean, if America goes down the shitter economically, China comes in and, you know, no, bend it, over and spell run. No, no, because China's going down too is the problem. The Pax Americana. It's not built on, we'll send the legions. It's built on, we'll tank, uh, it's built on, we'll tank your economy. You will starve in the streets, as will your people, and their and their children, and their children, all the way all the way down into the seventh generation, yea, with such great wailing and gnashing of teeth, that you, sir, will almost certainly be first through the guillotine. Off with their heads, said the Red Queen. Well, that's what led to the French Revolution. Well, yeah, the French Revolution was a bloody slaughter of the monarchy because the monarchy that's what's was going, corrupt. But that's what's going to happen. What? I mean, homie who broke into the gun store and was on the lam for like two weeks made all those threats against Trump. I'm like, let's see what he does. <laughs> You're going to get us visited by the Secret Service. I mean, you won't get close enough to kill him. But that's just it. Killing random people doesn't help. You know, yeah, as a no, long-term no. strategy, t terrorism is awful. I mean, but he only made threats against Trump. Yeah, but that's my point. Is that let's say he, let's say he, let's say this guy theoretically did decide that he was did decide to go in and shoot up, say, a federal installation. Okay, great, good job, good job, champ. You just blew away a post office. Good job. I you mean, haven't hurt Trump. You haven't even you haven't even hurt the apparatus that he's at the head of. You haven't even significantly hurt the post office. I mean, homie, first of all, homie's white, which I'm like, y thank you for being a crazy white person. Because well, we really good. need a crazy white person. Say, oh, trust me, we've got plenty. I mean, we need one right now who's going to do something crazy against Trump. I'm not saying that he he's going to succeed, that he's going to kill the fucking shithead president that we have that I didn't vote for and I'm assuming you didn't vote for and most of us him. didn't vote for because he didn't win the popular vote. He won the Electoral College, which is... Bullshit. Thank you. But yeah, no, none of us voted for Trump. But just because yeah. just the system was put in place by white people doesn't mean that I like it, doesn't mean that I support it, and doesn't mean that I don't think we need to tear it down and build something it's useful. It's an outdated, antiquated system. Well, no shit. It was designed for the. It was designed for. It was designed for a country with a with a max population of about two million people, and a and a, and built around a landowning gentry being the actual rulers of the state. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, the electoral it was college, built to be, it was built, it's Kentucky Fried bullshit, and I'm amazed that we haven't abolished it years ago well, because for a better system. But then it was like, when I say that, I'm like, well, what's a better system? I have no fucking answer. I mean, cause, I mean I'm sorry, because right. pop, popular vote? Eh. <sighs> imagine somebody, imagine somebody with Trump's marketing skills and Obama's, and Obama's charisma. I mean... Yeah, because no. don't try and tell me that Obama didn't win a lot, or didn't didn't get with, away with a lot because of just how damn charismatic the guy is. I mean, let's go back to '08, Obama versus Kerry. I was leaning Kerry until Sarah Palin showed her fucking ugly ass face and was saying all that dumb shit. I was just like, "Wow, you make the Republicans look really bad." But here's the thing: 
John Q. Dipshit liked her. Yeah. Which means he was... Oh, man. I don't know. Sarah Palin. She did horrible things for women in politics. Yep. Well, to be fair, she didn't do the Republican Party any favors. You know what the funny part is? Everybody was like, oh, if they don't win this one, they're going to fall apart. Well, here's the thing. They did win it, and they're still falling apart. I mean, they're only falling apart because they fucking Trump. Because Trump was the candidate that, one, divided the party, and two, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Well, and more to the point, he has no interest in listening to the guys who have been playing the political game for a while. Yeah, no, his cabinet picks are retarded. Well, they were going to be retarded like, anyways. It's just it was like one they're... big fucking game show of like. Right, he ran it. Right, he ran it like a season of The Apprentice. Like all these people are going to be are going are going to be are going to be are going to be on the next are going to be contestants on a season of The Apprentice. Like dumbass can't just accept that. No. Obama does not have the power to tap your phones, and no, he was not tapping your phones, ever, because he doesn't give a fuck about you. Right, he doesn't give a shit. He's leaving. <laughs> <coughs> and I really thought he was, like, gonna go ghost on us, but that nigga still posted up in Chicago, like, what the fuck? It's like, you was president, nigga. Get the fuck out this country. Eh. At this point, that would send the wrong message. Ah, uh, is no. The message is that we don't need Trump. Like Trump is horrible. Well, but that's just it. He can communicate that so much more effectively from within the, by staying within the country and just taking pot shots at Trump every time he opens his mouth. And Kanye West. Well, yeah, but let's be honest. The, the more people take pot shots at Kanye West, the better. <coughs> I don't know. I'm trying to make fun of Kanye West because he's actually fucking crazy. Like, he actually has some mental illness. Oh no. This is bad shit. We want to take musical genius is crazy. <coughs> well, there's a thing we've never seen. It's like we've never seen a musical genius go crazy? Please. Ha. Have you read ha. Mozart's letters? I mean, we can start with Mozart and end with Kanye West, but there's a whole plethora of crazy genius motherfuckers well, musically Beethoven in wasn't, between. Beethoven wasn't exactly bat, batting, 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 a, batting a 1,000 in the sanity department either. I heard Beethoven had syphilis, so that's why he was crazy. No, he was crazy before he, before he had syphilis. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that kind of goes with, like, you know, musical genius, you kind of go crazy. I don't even think it's that. <clears throat> I think it's literally just... Like I said, I think with Kanye, the main thing that's wrong with him is that he's surrounded by yes men. I mean, Kanye's been a little bit crazy since his mother died because he feels like he killed his mother because he paid for that elective surgery that killed her. So I understand that, but he been he been bashing crazy since she died because like that was that Taylor Swift thing. Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce has the best album of all times. Uh, get the fuck out of here. Nobody cares. No one, like, he's like, I made that bitch famous. You didn't make Taylor Swift famous. I knew who Taylor Swift was. And we wouldn't know who, and unfortunately we wouldn't know who she was even without your intervention. Like, what was the song, though? <coughs> I wear shirts, skirts, she wear t-shirts, I'm, <laughs> she the cheer captain, and I'm in the bleachers, whatever that fucking song is. I was rocking that shit in high school. Like, every morning I wake up, watch MTV, play videos while I get ready, and that song would play like at least once a day. And I'd be like, yeah, this shit rock. I'd take a break from my little John and my crunk music, and I'd rock out the Taylor Swift while I get ready. Like, so people was fucking with Taylor Swift before you, Kanye. Like, it interrupted. <laughs> Right. Pretty much all you do is cement that. Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the guy who's an asshole. And Beyonce didn't even have a good video that year. Taylor Swift definitely deserved a win over her that year. That year. My opinion of both of them is frankly unprintable. 
Well, yeah, because you don't listen to pop music or music music. What do you mean music music? I mean, I listen to all music. You listen to, like, your offshoot genres and shit. I listen to fucking metal, okay? That's not an offshoot genre. I mean, you, okay, metal and other offshoots of that. Because sure. But those offshoots are those offshoots are to give are, are to give some, the person I'm talking to some idea of what it look what it sounds like. As I, I mean, I'm sure you listen to good music sometimes, but I listen to all music, good or bad. Well, I end up listening to I end up listening to a lot of pop music. Let's not forget because of my job, that's all they play. Those top forties. <laughs> oh, I wish those stations at Walgreens would play some Little Yachty. Yeah, but that scared the white people. I love no Little Yachty is he's so one of the things I love about like hip hop music that it survived and evolved to the point where we have a subgenre called bubblegum trap. We've got all the gangster ambition of trap music with bubblegum pop music. And now we got niggas like Little Yachty and the Taylor Girls and shit who are like... <coughs> and it's like, this shit is so stupid, but yet it's so good in the worst kind of fucking way. Like, like well, here's the thing. I hate that I hate that I like Little Yachty. Like, but Little Yachty kind of dope and like these bitches I DJ who be like really like want to shake their ass and move. They be like, they fuck with Little Yachty. <laughs> well, again, most, again, <clears throat> you know, most of what I, most of what I end up listening to all night long is various types of pop music. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I hate it at Walgreens having here Bieber. Thankfully, that one's been taken out of the rotation. Because I mean, otherwise, I'd put a drill. I'd put a drill in my ear. I I won't lie. I used to fuck with Bieber back in high school when he was just a YouTube nigga. Same thing with Soldier Boy. But uh, and like I said, and, and like the previous entries, my opinion on them is utterly unprintable. I mean, if I said if I told you what I thought of them, YouTube would pull this shit. I mean. Fucking Bieber? Bieber's a fucking sandy ass, shitty ass little cunt. And he's a, such an asshole to all, his fe to all his fans. And I'm surprised that these little fucking girls are so stupid be like, Ah, oh, I still love him. He's such a bad boy. He's an asshole. Yeah, he's not a bad boy. Bad boys have personalities. He's an asshole with no personality. No oh, he has class. a person. Oh, he has a personality. It's just it's whatever his manager told him his personality was today. It's whatever. It's whatever module they slotted in the little in the little slot at the back of his neck. Yeah, Bieber is just a cunty little bitch. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I was rocking to that girlfriend song, that one where you like oh, has the creep whispers like, "You can be my girlfriend." Da, 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 da. It was like that creep whisper is kind of dope. Like he spit some bars and shit. I guess. But Bieber's kind of like... Fuck Bieber. Fuck Bieber. Fuck Bieber. Yeah, the sooner, the sooner he's discovered... The sooner he's discovered lying in a pool of his own... Of his own... Of his own... Of his own of, of regurgitated semen from whichever producer he's been blowing... <clears throat> this week. The better. Yeah, no. I'm sure he's... You know... Getting turned out by some producer... Well, I can't think of any other reason why he, why they would bother to promote him. God know God knows it isn't the really it isn't his lyrical brilliance. Which for all the Kanye West is a jackass, I I will give him props where it's due. The man the man the man knows how to turn a phrase. I mean, Kanye is dope, but he's crazy. Right, like you know, <clears throat> technically proficient, but holy shit, do I not want to spend ten minutes around that man? Oh. Which, to be fair, given his views on white people, he probably would not be too thrilled about spending ten minutes with me, either. I mean... I don't know. Kanye is Kanye. I can't say too much on it, because... He's in fucking treatment for mental disorder shit. But... Hopefully, when he gets out, he's less of a jackass. <laughs> Or at the very least, just send away some of the yes men once in a while. Let him hear the word no. Let the negative, let the negative response enter his life once more. Yeah, he is a person that needs to be told no. I'm like, 
But then again, a lot of people in the music industry need to be told no. <laughs> yeah. I would argue most of them could stand with hearing it more often. <clears throat> Though someone could tell me yes on my new mixtape. Yeah, so this seems like a good place to stop. Yep.